Hey, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to make a quiche in a Portuguese style with some linguiça, onions, and some cuivs or collard greens. That's very popular in Portugal. So we'll get right to it. You want to start your crust right away because when forming your dough, before you roll it out, you want to give time for your crust to chill in the refrigerator. This is to make sure your butter is staying cold, which is very important for a flaky crust. And also it relaxes the gluten a little bit to make it a little easier to roll out. Having cold butter that does not melt is crucial in order to get a flaky, crumbly crust. So I have our cold butter. The first thing I want to do is chop it up, probably like half inch pieces, roughly. This method I'm going to put in the food processor. The recipe calls for 14 tablespoons or seven ounces of butter. Usually um, your butter right on the side will have the tablespoon, so just count out 14 of those that much. If your house is warm, in between these stages, put this butter in the refrigerator. You do not want it to be spreadable. It should be very firm. I'm gonna put this in my refrigerator just in between. Okay, now I want to crack the egg. Just put one egg in there. And you want to mix that up a little bit to get the yolk and egg white incorporated. Okay, this crust calls for two cups of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt. The blade attachment is what's in the food processor. Do a quick on and off to mix up the salt and flour. That's it. And now I'm going to put in about a quarter of the butter at a time and just give it a quick pulse. So that butter gets covered with flour. You don't want the butter to stick all together in a big clump. Basically what you're looking for is to get tiny pieces of butter throughout the crust. And that is what makes a pie crust crumbly. Tiny pieces of cold butter. So I'll put a little more butter in there. Another little butter. And one last pulse. So what you're looking for, like right now, see how there's still big chunks in there? You kind of want that to be like a coarse cornmeal consistency, something like that. And this is why you want to use cold butter because, you know, just the friction could start melting it. So there, I could tell, like, I can't, I can't feel any big pieces of butter. So that's perfect. That's just like a, you can almost see, like, you probably can't even tell. It probably just looks like regular flour, but I could feel, like, just little, like, big pieces of sand in there. So that's set. And now with the food processor on, I'm gonna feed the egg mixture right into the top. If it doesn't come together yet, we might add another tablespoon of cold water. Right away, with that extra moisture, you know, eggs are mainly water, it starts to form a dough. And that is virtually all you want. So th this formed fine, so I don't need to add a couple more drops of water. Sometimes this dough could be made with just water, but I find the egg just makes the crust a little more durable. So that, that is fine. If it folds into a ball easily, that's what you want. Now you just want to form the dough into a ball. So it'll start sticking to itself. It's not one nice smooth dough ball. You know, it's very rough in there. And basically the water from the egg hasn't fully hydrated into the flour. You could do it up to this point a day ahead of time and keep it in your refrigerator. So that looks great. I'll wrap this up and I'll put it in our refrigerator. So now I'm gonna chop up my onions in a fairly small dice before I saute them. Now I'm gonna put collard greens or cuivs. You also could use spinach or kale. Then I'm gonna chop it up in small pieces. For quiches, you want to pre-cook the vegetables because or else they'll release so much water when they're being baked that the quiche will not want to set up properly or it'll just be sweating out a lot of liquid. In it. The onions have not been seasoned, so I'm gonna season those, maybe about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I will cook my onions until they're soft probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Next, we'll slice up the linguiça in little coin shapes. We'll saute the linguiça and the collard greens. The linguiça has been cooking for a few minutes. Now we'll add the cuivs.
I'm going to use a little peaty peaty sauce in here. Give it a little bit of a kick. And see all this steam coming out of the pan? That's what you want. You want to get the moisture out of that kale and dry it out a little bit. This gives the kale you know, a nice sauteed flavor by sauteing it in the extra virgin olive oil. Also, you're driving out a lot of the moisture that would come out into your quiche. Okay, the collard greens and linguisa have been cooking for about eight minutes. I'm gonna pull out a few pieces of linguisa, keep to use as garnish on top. And now, except for the eggs, our filling is done. So I'll mix the cooked onions, linguisa, and collard greens together. Up to this point, you can make your crusts a day ahead of time and either keep them in the ball shape or roll them into the tart pans and just keep those in the refrigerator, then bake them. And you also could make this vegetable filling here a day ahead of time. Okay, next I'm gonna show you the technique if you do not have a food processor, how to make this pie crust. So I have my two cups of flour with the salt in there. I have my butter that's pretty close to frozen that I already chopped up and you want to do these a few at a time so you just put your flour you could do this on a cutting board a cookie sheet pan if you're using a knife if you don't have a bank scraper it's probably best to use a cutting board with a knife on it and you start off with a few pieces of butter at a time because you, you kind of want all those tiny pieces of butter being separated by flour so they don't all stick together so you know it's never just a clump of butter. It should be butter surrounded by flour. So you kind of want to feel around. You see these pieces are about a quarter inch. Ideally, I would say about an eighth of an inch is the size you want to get the biggest pieces to. If it's really hot in your kitchen and you feel like the butter's melting, like it's not firm anymore, you could take this whole mixture and put it in your freezer for like five minutes, then bring it out and start over. Your butter should always feel firm. Okay, now we'll make a little bit of a well there. And we just want to start incorporating just a little bit of this egg mixture at a time. So I'm just lacing in like maybe a half of a teaspoon at a time. That in there. I'm trying not to use my hands because my hands are warm. So I'm trying to use the bank scraper or your knife to move the dough around. Drizzle that all over. Make it really well. Drizzle that all over. You just want to spread out that egg mixture as evenly as possible so it's evenly distributed throughout the whole pie crust. The test is this should form a ball, form a dough. And I can tell like it really kind of wants, it's not really holding its shape too well. Now, now we're getting a little better. Now I think that's already forming a dough. Sometimes you might need like, you know, because the density of flour and we didn't weigh it out. Sometimes you might need like a little teaspoon of water to bring it together. But that looks pretty good, so we just want to form that up now into a ball. That's about it. So now, same as the other crust, you want to let this rest to let the flour fully hydrate, let the gluten relax a little bit. Because right now, if you try to roll it out in a crust, it would just want to break apart more. Okay, just a little extra precaution, we'll butter the, the tart pan. A lot of times with quiche, you barely need it because the crust has so much butter that it's not always necessary. But especially if you have old pans, then sometimes, you know, they just get a little rough and want to stick a little more. This pan's in fairly good shape, but I'll do it anyway. So today I'm making two quiche, but the, the main recipe is just for one quiche. I'm just going to happen to be going to a larger party of some Portuguese people, so I'm doubling it up using two different pans so you can see that you do have some versatility there. You also could just use a plain, you know, these both have false bottoms, but you could use just a, a pie pan that does not have a false bottom. Okay, now we'll roll out the quiche crust. Put a little flour on your table. So you can see it's fairly firm.
kind of keep on rolling away from you and pick it up, get some more flour on the bottom and the top. And one reason you kind of like move it around is just to be sure it's not sticking. If it was sticking, you'd want to put more flour down. So far, it's not that bad at all. Your oven should be preheated at this time to about 375 degrees. You probably want it to be at least an inch all the way around thicker than the pan. It's like we're getting really close to the desired shape. Now the trick with all pie crusts is just roll it up on your rolling pin or your dowel up there and then you just roll it right over. And you kind of want to be gentle folding this to the bottom because you want to press in that pie crust to the bottom. Kind of while, while lifting the edge, you kind of want to tuck it into the bottom. Just kind of gently press the dough into the fluted edges. Then I just kind of tear it along the side. You could just get the rolling pin and cut it all at once, but I just like to make sure everything's filling in correctly. Okay, that looks really good. No tears. If you did get tears, like on the bottom, you could use extra dough and just press it right in there. So I will put this in the freezer for probably about 30 minutes. Okay, we'll measure out our cream. I used about two cups of heavy whipping cream or whipping cream, they're both just about the same. I will put my four eggs into a mixing bowl. About a ratio of so it's two eggs per cup of cream or milk, whatever you use. A little bit of cream. You really wanna be sure this is mixed well together. Takes about a teaspoon of salt. Now we can mix in our filling into the egg mixture. About a cup of your favorite Portuguese cheese. It could be like St. George, or if you can't find any Portuguese stores where you live, something like a Monterey Jack. That's it, so that's ready to go. Now we're gonna bake our pie crust blind. It does a few things. It, you pre-bake your crust, that way when you put this soggy egg mixture into the crust, it's already set up and it doesn't make your crust soggy. It keeps it nice and brittle and crunchy the way you want it to be. It also, by having the weight, it keeps the edges from shrinking down because sometimes the edges could shrink down the sides of the pan and it also keeps the bottom, sometimes the bottom will want to pop up and so it kind of keeps the bottom nice and flat against your pan. You want to bake your pie crust at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. Remove the pie weights and then put it back in the oven and bake it an additional five minutes. You want to press the foil into the corners so the weights, whether you're using pennies or dry beans or pie weights like I have, so they settle right into the corner. It prevents this crust from shrinking down as it cooks. My oven is already preheated to 375. I have these ceramic baking weights. So I'll put this right away into the oven. This is, you don't want to let this sit out for like 10 minutes to let the crust get warm. This crust should go in cold. Okay, the, the pie has been baking blind for about 15 minutes. Has a little bit of color on the edge. So see now this edge is kind of already set. Now you will put it back in the oven for an additional 10 minutes. Looks really good, starting to smell really good. So I lowered it at 325 eggs. You know, you just don't want to cook over high heat. That's why we lower that to 325. Especially with these tart pans that have false bottoms, I always like to make sure it's real hot. I like to make sure I put it on top of a cookie sheet pan. Probably should have had it on top of there the whole time. That way I don't have to worry about it leaking in case it drips out, you know, a hole in the crust or something. So the quiche is going to bake at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 50 minutes. Or hopefully you guys are starting to get these thermometers. Virtually all quiche flan is done at 170 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's been 55 minutes. I'm going to check the quiche for temperature. I put the linguisa on top after it was cooking for about 30 minutes, so it went sink to the bottom. And you could tell you know, a few signs the crust is getting nice and dark and really no jiggling. Put it right in the middle. Okay, so it's about 171, which is perfect. I'll take it out. All right, quiches, you can serve them cold. I like to serve them at room temperature, so I'll let it cool down an hour before trying to cut into it. It's probably been resting for about 40 minutes, it's still quite warm.
Oh, 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 look at that. Nice cleavage in there. Some linguisa. Here's an extra quiche I made without linguisa for my vegetarian daughter. He made it in the spring foam pan and just wanted to show you how nice that crust looks. So thanks for joining me. Now you can cook this quiche in the Portuguese style. Now go out and cook for somebody else.